Welcome. Today we're going to talk about geometry. There's a lot of definitions today about points, lines, planes, and angles. I suggest that for the beginning of the notes you set your page up something like this with four columns leaving the most room for the description. That will be the longest part. It's like a definition. And we're going to name points, lines, planes, and give a description, and then a sample and symbolic name. And both of those can be quite a bit shorter, leaving the bulk of the room for description. Once your page is set up, continue on to the next uh, slide. So the first one that we're going to talk about is a point. It's the most basic thing in geometry. It's a point names a location. It actually has no space that it takes up in zero dimensions. It has no length, no width, and no height. Therefore, it's infinitely small. Whenever we draw a point, it's supposed to be an imaginary representation of that. Here's an example of how you would draw a point. We're calling this a sample. And the symbolic name, when you name a point, you have to write the word point. It's actually the longest name for the smallest thing because it's the one that we write out completely, point A. Next is line. A line is perfectly straight and extends forever in both directions. So a line is a one-dimensional object. It has only length. It has no width or height. So a point has zero dimensions and a line has one dimension. We can draw a line and name it either using two points that are on the line, any two points can name the line, or we can name it with a single cursive letter. So this line could be called line L, or it could be named using the two points BC or CB. Because a line goes in both directions, it doesn't matter which point you name first. However, when you name it using the two points, you draw the symbol of a line above the line. That's a a double facing arrow, okay, an arrow that faces both directions. And we'll see that the different symbols above the two letters can change what you're naming. Whether you're naming a line or a segment or a ray depends on what the symbol above looks like. So next we shall name a plane. A plane is a perfectly flat surface that extends forever in all directions. It's another purely mathematical a uh, hypothetical object. It There's no real plane in nature, I would put it that way, because it's perfectly flat, has no depth at all, so a plane has exactly two dimensions, length and width. A sample would look very much like a parallelogram, um, because there's no way to show that it goes on forever. So when we name it, we have to say that it's a plane. And we would call that plane P, or we could call it with three letters, plane B, C, D. And it needs to have three letters that are not linear, that are not in a straight line. Next comes a segment. A segment is part of a line. It has to have two endpoints and it connects the two endpoints. That's what a segment does. The length of the segment, GH, would be written without the line segment symbol above it, just as GH like that. So whether you include the symbol or not is whether you're talking about the line segment itself or its length. So here's a sample of a segment, GH, and symbolically we could call it GH or HG they name the same segment. So I'm not naming two segments when I say GH and then HG. I'm just naming the same segment twice, two alternate names. Next comes ray, which is another part of a line. A ray has exactly one end point. When you name a ray, you have to name its end point first. So here's our sample ray. This ray, when we name it, ha the name has to begin with K. 
this ray would be called kj. Notice that we put the ray symbol above it, which is an arrow with one pointing in one direction only, and it starts at its endpoint and then goes through the point that's not the endpoint. Okay, now that you've practiced with the symbolic names, I'd like you to try and match which name goes with which symbolic name. So can you determine which one is the length, which one is the line, which is the segment, and which is the ray? Right? And here's the answers. Next, an angle is formed by two rays with a common endpoint. The rays are the sides. So the two rays that I see here are rays BA and BC. So their common endpoint is B. And the common endpoint is called the vertex. The vertex of this angle is B. You can name the angle angle B. Or you can name it using three letters. We could call it ABC or CBA. But when using three points, the middle point of the name must be the vertex so that you could actually trace your finger along the ray as you name it from A to B to C or from C to B to A. So ABC or CBA, those are two good names for that uh, angle. And so is angle B is a good name for that angle. Why would we want to use three letters when it's much more complicated? Well, sometimes you may have several rays that emerge, or several angles that emerge from the same vertex, like this situation. Now, just saying angle B is ambiguous. Do you mean this angle B? Or do you mean this angle B? Or do you mean the whole thing? Or do you mean the other side? So by saying angle A, B, C, now I'm being very clear that I, I intend to say this angle. All right, four more definitions. We're going to do acute, right, obtuse, and straight. The measure of an acute angle is greater than 0 degrees, but less than 90. Acute literally means sharp. A right angle measures 90 degrees. The measure of a right angle is 90 degrees and there's a symbol that we include. This is the right angle symbol. It looks like a little tiny square that you put in the corner. An obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180. Obtuse can translate as dull. So that's greater than 90 but less than 180. You can see that that one is not very sharp. And finally, a straight angle measures 180 degrees. It's essentially a straight line. Finally, we're going to talk about complementary and supplementary angles. So complementary angles are two angles whose measures add to 90 degrees. So here's a right angle. If I were to divide this into two sections, then those two sections must add to 90 degrees. It just makes sense, right? The whole thing's 90. So these add to 90, so therefore these are two complementary angles. Can you think of the measure of the other angle? In other words, what is the complement of 35 degrees? Well, 55 plus 35 equals 90, so the answer is 55 degrees. The last definition for today, supplementary angles are two angles whose measures add up to 180. So here we have a straight angle, which measures 180 degrees, and if I divide it into two pieces and tell you the measure of one, then you can tell me its supplement. What would be the supplement of 45 degrees? Again, subtract from 180, and you should get 135 degrees. 135 plus 45 
equals 180. So these are supplementary angles. Just uh, a simple way to keep track of this, I think of complementary C is a smaller letter than S, or it comes sooner in the alphabet, and 90 is less than 180. So that helps me remember which is which with complementary and supplementary.